Welcome to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. This show was created with the intention of helping others to help and love themselves. Aside from weekly skin tips, you will hear me feature amazing souls from around the world who are making a difference by helping others in their own way. You may also hear me follow up with a guest. I have hypnotized on an online edition of Love from the Hip, which is available on YouTube. George Land, author, speaker, and general system scientist, with the help of Beth Jarman, conducted a creativity test in 1968. This study involved 1,600 children ranging in age from four to five years old. This happened to be the same creativity test they developed for NASA to effectively measure the creative potential of their rocket scientists and engineers. NASA was very pleased with the efficacy of this test, yet the question remained, where does creativity come from? Was it genetic or something learned in life? So they decided to find this out by giving the same simple test to children. This became a longitudinal study, and they retested the same children in five-year increments at 10 years and then later at 15 years of age. The results were shocking. 98% of the five-year-olds were highly creative. Five years later, when these same kids were 10 years old, only 30% were highly creative. That's a 68% drop. And another five years later at age 15, only 12% were highly creative. The same test was also given to adults. Sadly, out of over 1 million adults with the average age of 31, only 2% were highly creative. From this test, Dr. Land concluded, our non-creative behavior is being learned in school. Basically, our educational system, which was developed during the Industrial Revolution over 200 years ago, trained us to be good workers and follow instructions, essentially dumbing us down and stealing away our creativity in the process. The studies conducted on the children also showed two types of thinking that take place in the brain. Each of these use different parts of the brain. One is called divergent, that's imagination, and is used for new possibilities. The other is convergent, and that's for making judgment, evaluating, or making a decision. Dr. Land used the analogy of divergent as the acceleration and convergent as the break. According to Dr. Land, as children are educated, they are taught to use both kinds of thinking at the same time, which is impossible. Dr. Land explained that when we look inside the brain, we actually find the neurons constantly fighting each other and diminishing the power of the brain because we are constantly judging, criticizing, and censoring. Dr. Land suggested criticizing less and being more curious, as well as judging less and seeking to understand more. He advised that we allow children to split their thinking processes in different states to make each of them more effective. In order to have a child retain their creative ability, they should be encouraged to let their mind run free first to come up with their best ideas. Only afterwards should they then sit down and evaluate them to see which ones they think are the best. Dr. Land also recommended teachers reinforce and promote creative behavior in their classrooms. In looking at brain scans, Dr. Land explained that when we work under fear, we use a much smaller part of the brain. When we use logic, we use more. But when we use creative thinking, the brain just lights up. Dr. Land expressed his concern for what our future holds. Are we going to be in a culture that depends on the right answers, that is repeatable and predictable? Or are we going to be in a culture that has new possibilities with a new future, solving new problems? Dr. Land's solution for a promising future for humanity requires creativity and imagination. And the time is now. According to Dr. Land, we all have the capacity and the ability for imagining and creating a new future. With the new data and science of understanding how the mind works, Dr. Land was hopeful that we can not only spread this knowledge, but also cultivate creativity not just through education, but also through business, government, and other organizations. Dr. Land encouraged each and every one of us to find our five-year-old self again. And, And one way in which we all can is when we are dreaming. He also recommended starting with a simple exercise involving your table fork and coming up with 25 to 30 ideas on how to improve that table fork. By taking that first leap and turning your five-year-old on, Dr. Land believed we can tap into that imagination that every one of us has to make the future extraordinarily brighter for everybody. What are you doing to reawaken your inner creative genius sleeping inside of you? What are you doing to practice your divergent fluency At the same time, what are you doing that is limiting your imagination? You know those limits, too. Those are imaginary. As Picasso said, every child is an artist. 
The problem is staying an artist when you grow up. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Gabriela Masala. She is a consultant, a facilitator, and author of Everyday Magnificent Practices to Activate an Unlimited Life. She will share why the creative process is a catalyst for transformation and how to light up your consciousness. Plus, later on the show, we will open up the phone line so you can ask Gabriella about how to tap into your creativity or how to build trust with your intuitive wisdom. So stick around after this quick break. Men, care for your skin properly, starting with your face. Sakura Skin and Mind offers their Gentleman's Groom Clinical Facial for just $120. Designed for your rugged skin, a deep cleansing clinical facial is like a one, two, three punch to wrinkles, age spots, and problem skin. Tame those brows, ears, and nostrils. Sakura Skin and Mind, erasing wrinkles one clinical facial at a time. Learn more at sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K-U-R-A SkinAndMind.com Get your daily dose of variety. Alternative Talk 1150. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe and share my YouTube channel and podcast on Podcast One, Love from the Hip, and that's H-Y-P. Today I have the pleasure of interviewing Gabriela Masala, she is a consultant, a facilitator, and author of Everyday Magnificent Practices to Activate an Unlimited Life. Hey, thanks for joining us today, Gabriella. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Sakura. And where are you joining us from? I am in the heart of Texas, in ah. the Austin Hill Country. Nice. <laughs> so why do you think it is important to get back in touch with our imagination or to be creative? That's such a great question. I love the introduction that you gave. And I think in itself, it says so much about our potential as human beings and that we would have such a high degree of creativity as children. And that then for so many of us in our adulting, we fall out of sync with that and out of touch with that. And so that when we are in our creative mode, we are connected to our intuition, to the power of our ability to be divine creators. And I don't say that lightly or in a Pollyanna way. It is certainly a time here on our planet where we need as much of our collective creativity and innovation and imagination as possible to dream a new vision for life on Earth. Hmm, that's beautiful. Do you think it also connects us then to Source? Absolutely. One of the most simple formulas that I love is that when we are involved in the creative process, when we bring something from our imagination, uh, from the unknown, the unseen into our hands, our voices, our bodies, our tools of whatever our creation is, we are directly aligning with the force of creation, with the creator, source energy itself. And we get to be vessels of that, channels of that. It's an embodied experience of communion with the source energy, with that creative creation force of life. Mm, okay. And do you think then, too, it sounds like, you know, with creativity, putting the power into our own hands, it seems like there's also an accountability, accountability that is established as well. Definitely. Definitely. I do feel like that's essential even when we consider in any, there's so much creativity. When we look out into the world, we see that there's actually a ton of creativity in the worlds of technology, for example. And yet what happens when technology is in the hands of someone who's not responsible, who's not also connected to the intelligence of their hearts, of the intelligence that we might even say of the deeper soul being that knows that we are actually one interbeing that that interconnection we have with all of life that we are actually responsible for one another's well-being hmm. and so at that level absolutely can we match our creativity to our responsibility to serve and contribute to life and at the same time setting an intention too absolutely yes yes i love that and i love the what I like to call the marriage of intention and surrender, that when there is a really clear intention, directive, clarity that we can feel that ideally that that intention, again, is coming from our whole brain intelligence, from as much 
of that um, logical linear, but also the creative, the imaginative, the intuitive, and then connected to the intelligence of the heart. Mm. That was, that's a very different intention than maybe the ego intention of the I want, the I, me, mine. And then when we marry that with surrender, which is also, from my perspective, a humble honoring and letting go and release to there is a mystery and it's and it's bigger than all of us and it is all of us and there's an intelligence in the field what dr joe dispenza one of my mentors calls a loving intelligence and an intelligent love that is orchestrating everything and so my intention may not be matched by my desired outcome and yet i can put my intention from my whole heart, my whole being out into the universe, and then also surrender and trust that it will be manifest in the best way, even if it doesn't look like what I think is the best way. Hmm. So and make the intention and then let it go. Set it free. Awesome. Well, we're going to have to take a quick break. I'm sorry to interrupt you. But remember, this is a live show, and if you would like to ask Gabriella how to tap into your creativity or how to build trust with your intuitive wisdom, then feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527 after this quick break. Post-traumatic stress syndrome affects people from all walks of life, triggered by sexual assault, traffic, collisions, warfare, or other threats to life. PTSD is a killer. Every day, an average of 22 veterans commit suicide due in part to PTSD. Retired U.S. Colonel Debbie Simpson struggled with her own PTSD, following a military career specializing in critical care. Debbie turned to dancing as a way to heal unresolved grief, guilt, and shame caused by the losses of war. The benefits were so great that she founded the nonprofit Battlefield to Ballroom, a unique approach to assisting other brave warriors. Battlefield to Ballroom has partnered with famed dance company Arthur Murray International to help veterans in need. If you or someone you know can benefit, log on now to battlefieldtoballroom.org. That's Battlefield, the number two, ballroom.org. Life is a dance, and you can give the gift of the first steps towards recovery. Donate at battlefieldtoballroom.org today. Is your tween starting to experience a change in their skin? Want to get them on an easy at-home routine and have good skin hygiene? Allow Sakura Skin in Mind to help your tween out. This brief, deep cleansing and educational 35-minute facial is just enough to get your tween, ages 10 to 12 years old, started off in the right direction. Sakura Skin in Mind uses the latest in the clinical skincare industry to care for your tween the right way for just $65. Sakura Skin in Mind, treating skin out there with an ounce of treatment and a pound of protection. Call 206-730-7429 or go to sakuraskinandmind.com. At Madsen Medical Spa, our goal is a healthy, beautiful you. We're a full-service medical spa, but our focus is educating people on maintaining health and wellness. We're excited to announce a new addition to our menu, Nootropic Popular Beverage. This magical drink formulation alleviates unnecessary snacking while keeping you focused and alert throughout your day. It satisfies your hunger, renews your energy, enhances your mood, diminishes aches and pains. Essentially, it makes you happy. And who doesn't want to be happy? Patients have already been raving about Nootropic Popular Beverage. They've elevated their mood while losing inches in the process. It's safe, natural, fast, and effective. Drink happy, feel happy. Nootropic Popular Beverage, happiness in a cup. Available at happytoelevate.com. That's H-A-P-P-Y-T-O-E-L-E-V-A-T-E.com. Or call 206-234-9188. Warning, you may feel happy. Peach fuzz is great, if it's on a peach. Let Sakura Skin and Mind remove unsightly hair with dermaplaning. Although its primary purpose is to remove layers of dead skin, it's just one of the added benefits, leaving your skin baby smooth, safe, effective, fast, and affordable. What a concept! Sakura Skin and Mind wants you to look your very best, and dermaplaning is just one tool in their chest. Find out about dermaplaning at sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K-U-R-A, skinandmind.com. We bring out the healthy skin and healthy way of thinking you didn't know you had. Some people know a good thing when they hear it. Alternative Talk 1150. 
Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. Don't forget to tune in right here on KKNW every Wednesday at 2 to 3 p.m. for more Love from the Hip. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Gabriella Masala. She is a consultant, a facilitator, and author of Everyday Magnificent Practices to Activate an Unlimited Life. And remember, this is a live show, and if you would like to ask Gabriella about how to tap into your creativity or how you can build trust with your intuitive wisdom, feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527. So, Gabriella, with us all adulting and losing our creativity and our imagination as we age, how do you recommend people connect back in with their creativity? I would say start with play. So really engage the playful, curious, wonder part of you. And there are a million ways to be creative um, in any life. And so I would say start where you are and look at what lights you up as an entryway. You know, for some of us, it might be to get creative in the garden, for others to get creative in the kitchen. For some, before we even jump into free unleashed creativity, we may need to um, write in a journal or shake, shake, shake it out. I think sometimes <laughs> getting in the body and first releasing stuck energy, getting out of the head again, in whatever way you do that. For me, one of the best ways to get out of my head is to just dance full on. So this is for everyone, but it does require getting out of that habitual driving analytical judging, separating, controlling part of our brains and really getting into the joy of what we love and the playfulness of being free. Yeah. And would you also recommend then making it an everyday exercise so that it becomes a habit? Yeah. I mean, I would even recommend making it a way of life. Yeah. You know, (laughs) ultimately we can, how we live, how we live a life, how we choose to walk through the world, how we dress ourselves, how we engage our relationships. Um, All of this can be creative, not just the many different acts that we might judge as creative, whether it's drawing or singing or painting or creating with our hands in whatever ways we do that. Really, all of life can become our greatest masterpiece of creativity. That's wonderful to bring up also the point of the creativity kind of enriching your relationships, too. Definitely. Yeah. And with that, again, I'm going to speak to how you started playfulness and wonder the magic of our everyone at any age has that magical inner child quality that is wise, very wise. And for sure, for some of us, it has been schooled and programmed and uh, silenced out of us. However, it's never too late and it's alive in every single being. Mm. This playful, magical child, wonder and wisdom. That's wonderful. So tell me, how did you come to write your book? I started to um, write this book because I was in advanced retreats with Dr. Joe Dispenza and receiving so much amazing inspiration and insights. And the way that I have for decades been able to integrate as a very creative bubbling person person has been to journal. And so I was creating mandalas and writing in different colors and um, really putting this all in a book. And then as I came home from these retreats, I felt I want to feel this in love with life and this lit up every day and i want to bring these teachings of how do we live from a place of wholeness rather than from the mind of separation i wanted to bring them into my daily life so i paired them with all of the practices and activities and meditations that you find in the book and um, and then created this journal for myself from that i started sharing it with my clients and retreats and groups and did the pilot program. And I just saw so many people light up that I thought I'm just going to make this available to anyone who would want it so that they can have this process and their own discovery of what it is to have an everyday magnificent life. Wow. And also to connect with ourselves again. Definitely. That intimate connection with our deepest self, that friendship, that sweetness um, is a gift that is available to all of us and definitely part of what emerges naturally in this process. 
So can you explain to my listeners that haven't read your book yet, how is it interactive? You bet, Sakura. So it is an interactive journal because the first 25 pages are an introduction, an overview, uh, how and why to use this book, and then all of the uh, foundational activities of journaling and mandalas and writing prompts of all kinds, and then all of the practices that pull from mind-body uh, meditations, mindfulness, and of course, energy medicine practices, which I love, and then touchstones, which are these very simple, on the spot, uh, two to three minute touchstones or activities that we can do that change our state and connect us to our whole being. And then the other 150 pages are templates for the participant to fill out and put their color, their words, their insights, their images, and really create a lifestyle design through the process. Okay. So does one have to be an artist or a writer to use your book? Absolutely not. <laughs> we do need to come with a willing heart, a willingness to, again, ask that mind that controls and criticizes and analyzes to step aside and to really let that curious wonderment and expression find itself to the pages and to our lives. We do need that. Yeah, for sure. And then can I ask you, you did um, incorporate mandalas. Why did you choose those? I have been working with mandalas for decades as an arts therapist and a transformational life coach. And I love how working within the circle instead of working within a box, right? It's no mistake while we say get out of the box and into the circle, the circle calls wholeness. Mandala means sacred circle or magic circle. Mm -hmm. And so when we put image, color, form, energy sketches, whether we consider ourselves an artist or not, we put that in the circle and it naturally brings a state of wholeness and integration to our psyche. It balances our brain. It naturally connects from that place of wholeness with information, which is sometimes vibrational and feeling based that we could never find from those known structures of the mental, critical mind alone. Hmm. Wow. So it just essentially knocks down borders. Definitely. Definitely. <laughs> it opens us up to our wholeness. Yeah. Well, I want to come back to just more about the touchstones and life practices in the book. But I want to ask you first, what should people expect to see, feel, or experience as they move through your workbook? I would hope that they experience a deeper sense of um, delight and playfulness and new possibilities in their lives, that they take on that kind of spring in your step uh, experience, that there's more creativity flowing, more energy flowing, more gratitude flowing, more love flowing, and that it's translating not just from that 10 minutes or 20 minutes in a practice or in a writing prompt, but that's translating into their whole lives. Wow, that's terrific. And can I ask you then too, at, at what have you been told by people that have read your book? How many days of doing it do most people start to experience that change? You know, in, in any life, it's really gonna be unique to the people who have done it. So I just finished one round of the journal and it took me an entire year. I really took my time with it. If someone touches it every day, they can get through it in about three months. Um, and I have some folks who have done that and reported back that they feel like they have stabilized in a place of, of their new life, their new perspective of life, their new way of being in life. So really, you know, 21 days, I say take it on and notice um, where there's resistance because sometimes resistance and that critical part of our our being and that part that hits a block and then doesn't make time, it will come up. And so we need to be willing to work beyond the resistances. But at a certain point, I'd say within three weeks, max, hmm. if we're really touching it every day, we're going to feel so lit up that it's not just something we're doing as a way to um, do something good for ourselves, but it's a way of being good to ourselves. Mm -hmm. And doing it for ourselves. That's awesome. So it's self-care. Definitely. Yeah, it's, um, it's, you know, light up your life, energy management. Okay. And so aside from including art and the mandalas, 
you also include some energetic body exercises. Can you give us some examples of those and why you chose to incorporate that? Yes. So um, some, there's so many practices. And um, what I'll say is that some of the energy medicine practices, as well as a lot of the movement practices, because we all know the power of movement, but literally our energy body, when it gets um, lit up, when we're circulating, whether it's with our breathing, with putting on some music and just shaking, trembling, dancing, right? Or with uh, tapping our thiamus gland on our chest and, and integrating the um, stimulation of our joints and spirals and circles. These are all some of the energy medicine practices that I incorporate. And it literally floods us with life force. It creates more energy in our fields. It, it expands us into the greater field of energy of which we're always connected. But if we're not circulating that breath, that life force, and if we're not in movement, that's really activating all of our joints, we are likely to be more stiff and rigid and feel disconnected from the field of energy. Yeah, and in a sense also be um, more prone to ailments and disease. That's right, that, that's what comes after that. <laughs> shutting down. Oh. Well, I hate to interrupt you again, but we're going to have to take another break. And remember, this is a live show. And if you would like to ask Gabriella how to tap into your creativity or how you can build trust with your intuitive wisdom, feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527 after this quick break. On this weekly skinny, I would like to talk about fractionated microneedle or RF microneedling. Radio frequency technology has been used in the skin industry for a while to improve skin laxity, wrinkles, and acne scarring. This technology is different than laser as it uses tissue resistance within various layers of the skin to transform RF energy into thermal energy. This then causes collagen contraction and stimulates new collagen production. It is recommended for all skin types unlike most lasers. Microneedling also has been around for years and used for skin rejuvenation as well. The fine needles cause microtraumas, which initiate a repair process, stimulating fibroblasts for new elastin and collagen. Not just any collagen, but that found in our fetus state. Microneedling, which is safe for all skin types, addresses a wide range of skin concerns like stretch marks, fine lines, wrinkles, laxity, pore size, scarring, pigmentation, broken capillaries, and more. Fractionated radio frequency, or RF microneedling, is the combination of the two to attempt to achieve enhanced results. Some studies have shown improved results in patients with increased collagen and elastin. It has been a most successful combination in treating hyperhidrosis or extreme sweating. Even with a topical anesthetic, it is still quite painful. Post-treatment, there is mild erythema for one to three days and possible bruising. Some patients have developed milia, breakout, rashes, blisters, and post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. There are a variety of different devices on the market. One of the biggest differences is whether or not the needles are insulated. Insulated needles deliver energy to the precise depth with only slight mechanical injury to the epidermis, whereas non-insulated needles deliver heat the whole length of the needle, which can lead to thermal damage at both the dermis and epidermis. I am a huge advocate of microneedling, which is not to be confused with those at-home rollers. But by adding radio frequency, I think this just gives rise to more cause for concern. Now you are adding heat to needles that don't have an endpoint with that energy. Unlike lasers, which are targeting melanin or pigment, fractionated radio frequency does not seek anything out. Instead, it is just delivering intense amounts of heat and energy deep into your dermis. Your dermis is where all the important functions of your skin exist. The heat delivered is essentially burning the skin, and burns cause scars. So now you're building up scar tissue, which leads to premature aging because the skin cells cannot function properly. I would advise one not to try fractionated radio frequency, but instead try microneedling all on its own. It will address all of what fractionated radio frequency is said to and more. Plus, it will not cause harm. And who wants to pay thousands of dollars to have their skin damaged anyways? If you are interested in trying microneedling or learning more about it, then email me at sakura at sakuraskinandmind.com or call 206-730-7429.
Alternative Talk 1150, online at 1150kknw.com. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And feel free to email me at sakura at lovefromthehip.com with your comments, your criticisms, your questions, and well wishes. Let me know how I am doing. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Gabriella Masala. She is a consultant, a facilitator, and author of Everyday Magnificent Practices to Activate an Unlimited Life. And remember, if you would like to ask Gabriella how to tap into your creativity or how you can build trust with your intuitive wisdom, feel free to call 1-888-298-KKNW or 425-373-5527. So Gabriella, I think it's important to stress that your book also incorporates meditation. Yes, it does. I am a lover of meditation and have been practicing so many different wonderful forms of meditation since I was in my 20s, which is 30 years ago. And uh, what I really want to emphasize first and foremost is that there are as many ways to meditate as there are individuals. And so to kind of clear the the slate from this very fixed idea of sitting on a cushion with our eyes closed alone. And that, yes, there is a power to that sense of quieting the mind, of knowing thyself, of clearing the way of all of the clutter that naturally will arise when we get still and present and close our eyes. But that over time, if not immediately, uh, we can really integrate meditation with our eyes open and we can take the meditative state, that state of contemplative reflection, inner quiet, to a walk out in the woods, to a walk down our neighborhood, to any of the many ways that we love to, uh, to connect to our bodies. So I love and share in the book, dancing meditation and cooking meditation and a meditation that's a, a sit in a nature spot, a reclining meditation, all the many movement meditations that might include yoga or qigong or tai chi so that there's really a very broad sense of how to bring that quality of deep connection with ourselves of quieting of our mind and and dropping into our more unlimited state of being there's so many ways to do that and so i really encourage that in the book and encourage the exploration and playfulness around how to bring a meditative state to the waking life as we walk through the world. Mm. And I love how you outline all of it because I think a lot of times people just get caught up in the mechanics of meditation and it actually becomes more stressful than it needs to be. So that's wonderful. Yeah, and then we can become self-critical. And the moment that we are going into is a good meditation, a bad meditation, I'm doing it wrong or judging it in any way, then we're right back in that mind of separation. We're right back in that very limited part of our thinking and brain that doesn't give us access, again, to come on back to how you started the show, that doesn't give us access to the fullness of our creativity, our imagination, Mm. our intelligence of our whole being. Yeah. And so can we we touch on your touchstones? (laughs) Because I have to say my favorite is flooding gratitude, but I was hoping that you can enlighten us with that. You bet. I love this touchstone. And again, the touchstones are something you can do anywhere, anytime. And I love to do several throughout the day because it's a way of coming back into that state where by your own definition, you feel magnificent, you feel awesome, lit up, connected, and love. And so flooding gratitude is very simple. And you can begin by taking a few deep breaths, sensing your feet. If you're able to even put a hand on your heart, if you want to, but you don't have to close your eyes, you can even use eyes open and just take in whatever is in your line of sight and start to flood your awareness for what you feel grateful for. And that can include anything, sunshine, the breeze on my face, the rain, uh, the the dogs, my child, the beauty of life, my my life, you know, whatever it is, no gratitude is too big or too small. Mm-hmm. And we are literally like a rain shower. We're flooding our field, our body, our breath with gratitude. And gratitude is a frequency. It's an electromagnetic signature. And when we start to really 
feel that earnestly bubble up with that feeling of gratitude, even touching our hearts as we do so, it changes our state. Right. And it brings us, yeah, so you know, you know it. <laughs> <laughs> it just brings us more opportunity to be thankful for. Definitely. And it changes our perception. It changes our heart rhythms. It changes our brain waves. And it connects us to a vibrational field that will only bring more of the same. I love this expression that what we appreciate, appreciates. Mm, I like that too. (laughs) So your book also essentially helps people to fall in love with themselves again. Would you say that's correct? I would say that it does really invite a sense of falling in love with life, Mm -hmm. falling in love with the wonder, the mystery, the joy of life. And from my perspective, what life is meant to be. And as children, we all know that. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And why do you believe this love is so powerful? So this so much more than just... um, a romantic idea of love or a, you know, kind of picture ideal, uh, shallow level of love. This is the love that bonds particles. This is the allurement of the universe. This is the love of life. You know, the love of, of our planet, of nature, of our loved ones, that when we feel that level of love, it literally bonds us. And that when we become bonded, we naturally wake up to wanting to protect, uh, savor, preserve, uplift, connect. Mm -hmm. And that's not just something that happens on the inside, though that's essential to really reconnect with what do I love and what loves me? Mm -hmm. You know, what does my heart, what do I know by heart? These questions that sometimes are completely taken for granted. But when we start to connect with that, again, it's an electromagnetic signature. Right. It is an energy that bonds us to creating more of what is life-giving. And you kind of emphasize this in your quantum wildcard practices in your book. I do. I do. (laughs) I I love love the love letter. I was hoping that you could elaborate on the power of the love letter. Sure. So the love letter is set up to be a writing meditation that is also a way of connecting with the future self. And uh, in this way, we are using our imagination, we're using our creativity, we're calling on our heart intelligence, and we're connecting to a future self, maybe an elder, wiser part of us that is looking back at the present self and loving it so much and giving it wisdom and uh, and insights. And so the love letter is really a love letter that we write to ourselves from our more expanded, unlimited, wise place, which is ever present. It's not somewhere out there. It's, it's a place that we can connect to. It's a part of us that already exists. And I know that's kind of far out and abstract perhaps for some of the listeners, But I'd say, again, get playful, get curious, take it on as your own experiment, do the activity, and then you tell me whether it um, was uplifting and inspiring. (laughs) Yeah, and I don't think it's way out there for my listeners, just so you know. (laughs) So your book also essentially helps people to connect with their intuition, correct? Definitely. Yeah. It sure does. Um, Intuition, again, everyone is intuitive. Every single being, I believe that that this is just a natural sense. And um, for some of us, more than others, it's, it's going to be essential to make a practice, just like we build strength with muscles, with repetition. Connecting to our intuition is that very same practice of building strength with it and then dissolving self-doubt, mm-hmm. learning how to get so clear and clean, I'm even going to say, about the lens of the heart from where we're seeing, that that intuitive message that comes in is often even deeply connected to the body. It's not in the thinking analytical brain. That's not where we find our intuitive knowing. Mm -hmm. And so what, what are some simple steps you would recommend for people to access or tap into their intuitive wisdom? I love um, the simplicity 
of the embodied wisdom. And so we can't think our way into intuition. So often if someone is uh, wrestling with some kind of decision or wrestling with some kind of, of issue that they're wanting intuitive information about, I would suggest to get really quiet and then to empty out the mental chatter, which often will include all the things that we might be afraid of, all the things that we feel doubt about, to empty that out. Sometimes it helps to have a friend that we can be witnessed by to empty out the chatter. Sometimes it can be writing in a journal and then to drop even deeper into, and my deepest heart says. So from there, listening from the body, listening for the body, ah, like where we get that, ah, that deep state of like, Mm -hmm. oh yes, this is where my body feels the yes. Mm -hmm. And so it can be a kinesthetic bodily felt intuitive voice, or it can also be a voice that comes naturally from a place of quiet and pause after we've cleared out the mind of its fears. Okay. Well, that's wonderful advice. Thank you for sharing. Well, I hate to interrupt you again, but we're going to have to take a quick break. So everyone stick around for more Love from the Hip. Your skin is your body's largest organ. Care for it properly, starting with your face. Sakura Skin and Mind offers several clinical facial treatments to help stimulate collagen production, eliminate toxins, boost circulation, and deeply cleanse. See a new you in your mirror. Clinical facials range from $90 and up. Do your face a favor. Sakura Skin and Mind, erasing wrinkles one clinical facial at a time. Learn more, sakuraskinandmind.com. S-A-K-U. URAskinandmind.com. Post traumatic stress syndrome affects people from all walks of life, triggered by sexual assault, traffic, collisions, warfare, or other threats to life. PTSD is a killer. Every day, an average of 22 veterans commit suicide due in part to PTSD. Retired U.S. Colonel Debbie Simpson struggled with her own PTSD following a military career specializing in critical care. Debbie turned to dancing as a way to heal unresolved grief, guilt, and shame caused by the losses of war. The benefits were so great that she founded the nonprofit Battlefield to Ballroom, a unique approach to assisting other brave warriors. Battlefield to Ballroom has partnered with famed dance company Arthur Murray International to help veterans in need. If you or someone you know can benefit, Log on now to battlefieldtoballroom.org. That's battlefield, the number two, ballroom.org. Life is a dance, and you can give the gift of the first steps towards recovery. Donate at battlefieldtoballroom.org today. What's your story? Have you ever sat with that question and looked to your heart for the answer? It's time to explore the real you. Tune in Thursdays from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. for the brand new show, Story You, with Coach Debbie. Debbie and her guests have a mission to inspire and coach you to find your voice. If you need direction, Story You with Coach Debbie is for you. If you want to be an author, Story You with Coach Debbie is for you. Tune in Thursdays at 4 p.m. and be inspired. Want a more youthful figure no matter what age? Find answers at Madsen Medical Spa. Allow doctors Aaron and Paul to help you eliminate your frustration with weight management. Say no, no to yo-yo, diets, and exhausting exercise grinds. Madsen Medical Spa will do the heavy lifting for you and coach you all the way through to your ideal weight. We offer the latest and greatest in body sculpting and body contouring lasers and devices, high quality nutritional supplements and meal replacements, as well as mindful practices. We will treat the inside to treat the outside, and it's all personal. Personally tailored for you. Men and women, drop inches, not just pounds, and see a healthy, beautiful you. Consultations are free. Results are priceless. Log on to MadsonMedSpa.com. That's M-A-D-S-E-N MedSpa.com. Or call 425-656-8008. That's 425-656-8008. Get the shape you want this summer. Become a healthier, more beautiful you. Alternative Talk 1150, here to uplift your day. Welcome back to Love from the Hip. I'm spiritual hypnotherapist, master esthetician, and your host, Sakura Sutter. And don't forget to follow me on Instagram and Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my podcast on Podcast One, Love from the Hip, and that's HYP. Today, I have the pleasure of interviewing Gabriella Masala. 
She is a consultant, a facilitator, and author of Everyday Magnificent Practices to Activate an Unlimited Life. So, Gabriella, before the break, you were talking about steps to access your intuition. At the same time, do you feel it's imperative that we find out why we are here on a soul level? I do, and I have a very broad perspective on that, that the simplicity of waking up to why has the soul taken a human form might be as broad an answer as to have a, the most loving, awake experience I have possible to connect here on the planet. Or it can be very specific, you know, to uh, whatever, fill in the blank of all of the, the potentials of how we can light up and contribute to this moment on the earth, you know, that we can, um, many of us have and do live a great life by any narrow sense of what it is to be successful, but maybe never even really tap into why the soul is here. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at our human moment and evolution and how we're really given a chance to be part of such a great unfolding, it's such a transformative time on this planet. And so as many of us that can light up and ask the question of why did I take this human form in this moment on this planet mm. and what are my gifts and how can I light them up and give back to the greater unfolding and collective awakening in a way that also gives life to life. And are there, yeah, are there also some simple steps that people can take? The most simple step, Sakura, is to find those moments of real intimacy with ourselves when we're not in the overstimulation of our culture or of media or of the ideas of what we have to do in our agendas and really just dropping into our hearts and asking that question of why am I here? How can mm. I serve? Awesome. What, what is it to live for the soul? To even start asking those questions um, is a profound first step. So can I ask you why you are here? Sure. The answer would vary <laughs> from day to day, but essentially I feel very clear and have from a very early age that I am here to love, to really remember, to help to remember all of us that we are love beings, that we are given the gift of life and that there is a whole realm of intelligence and possibility that is so much bigger than the very narrow band of reality that we're fed. So my calling in this life as a soul is really about love and about awakening and about a collective transformation of consciousness. Hmm. That's magnificent. <laughs> yeah. And what is the earliest memory? I know you said you were pretty awake as a child. What is the earliest memory you have of that? When I was three years old, I was in Uruguay, South America, my birthplace, and I have just a whole visceral memory of looking up at the stars and seeing you know, millions of stars and feeling so held in the, the sweetness of the summer night and so much love just felt so connected to everything and everyone and uh, an unbelievable, indescribable sense of peace and knowing and trust and love, even as a little three-year-old mm -hmm. and looking at the stars and feeling now, I know I used to be somewhere out there, <laughs> but now I'm here and I'm here because I agreed to it. Wow. And so even though the words weren't there as a young child, that memory has always stayed with me to validate my own direct heart's knowing um, while growing up in a culture that, you know, really invalidated a lot of the way I oriented to and saw life. Yeah. And so then essentially you went on to study some modalities to help validate what you were feeling and experiencing, correct? Yes, definitely. As from an early age, I dove into everything metaphysical, esoteric, so many world spiritualities, dove into um, both study and then later facilitation of yoga and meditation forms and uh, shamanism so that it really was uh, a beautiful homecoming from uh, an early age of then diving into all of the ways to support what wanted to come forth and develop in me so that I could be of service and give back mm -hmm. and contribute. 
That's wonderful. And you also have a master's degree in culture and creation spirituality. I do. Can you elaborate on that? <laughs> That's a new one for me. Sure. Briefly, I'll just say it was in California. And it was a, a deep embodied study of all of the um, core religious unifying beliefs and practices, as well as the mystical traditions, the indigenous tr traditions, ways that unite us as human beings that across all religious and spiritual practices have always been practiced. Dance, music, storytelling, um, being in intimate direction and connection with nature. So these commonalities that weave us into a field of unified love as humans. Hmm. And was there many aha moments then that you had during this course of study? There were, but there have been many, many more since and <laughs> continue to be. Wonderful. And is there an underlying theme then that you think to all that you have been guided to study? Uh, yeah, I would say that it's to remember that unity and love are essential and that it's not only uh, a good idea to rest in this, but it's also our native state that what we are is love through and through to the core and to have a discovery of that through our daily living. Wow. And where do you hope to grow from here? Such a great question. <laughs> Not to put uh, you on the spot. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's, you know, it's beyond words. I would hope to grow to a place where in my, in my lifetime, I can see humanity take a turn to an embodied experience of more love and compassion and stewardship care for our planet and really seeing our planet and our, um, our planetary family restored and, and uplifted to a place of such um, kindness and love and unity. Huh. Amazing. So can you tell my listeners how to contact you or learn more about you? You bet. I can be found at www.gabriellamasala.com. And that's Gabriella with one L. Come on over, visit, get in <laughs> touch. And, and I'd love to see it unfold together. And you do also one-on-one -on -one sessions, correct? I do, both in person, by Skype, by phone, lots of wonderful retreats and travel just about anywhere I'm invited. Great. Any upcoming retreats that you want to tell us about? Well, I'm headed to British Columbia, Hollyhock Retreat Center for the Future of Children, Transforming the Paradigm of Education. And that's actually coming up in two weeks. Awesome. And uh, after that, in August, I'll be at Kirtan Camp, Bhakti Yoga Kirtan Camp with Jayu Tal. And Nubia Tejera, and that's in Fairfax, California. All right. Well, thanks again for joining us today, Gabriella. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks to Eric, my amazing producer, and you, the listener. You can find me at lovefromthehip.com or sakuraskinandmind.com. You can also follow me on Instagram or on Facebook and subscribe to my YouTube channel and my podcast on Podcast One, Love From The Hip, and that's H-Y-P. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me at sakura at lovefromthehip.com and tune in next Wednesday at 2 p.m. for another Love From The Hip and make self-love contagious. Go ahead. I dare ya.